much too long for me, so I won't even attempt it. I just hope that the remarks I make aren't entirely uh, disconnected. Okay, so what I want to address are two things in this paper. The first, as a means of addressing the second, is about the ownership and dissemination of knowledge, which is the first. The second is about the place of philosophy of education, more precisely uh, of, sorry, philosophy in education, and more precisely philosophy of education. There are problems, obviously, that the first question gives rise to in relation to ownership and dissemination. Firstly, what we mean by ownership. Secondly, dissemination. And thirdly, by what we mean by knowledge. Now, the problematic, the way I set this up, really, is the question of ownership and dissemination. We know there is a kind of uh, tendency to think about uh, knowledge as information, and certainly there is a, an explosive growth of information, particularly on the internet. Uh, and the question then arises, who owns this uh, information? And it's actually not that obvious who owns the information. Secondly, the question of ownership can't be dissociated from the question of its dissemination. We know, of course, in our own uh, understanding of uh, the nature of knowledge is where we're used to the printed book monographs, articles, journals, and so on. Uh, conference papers like this, delivered to, to gatherings like this. Uh, how do we publish all of that? Well, we've got it being recorded, so the, the, the spoken word is, is, is available there. Uh, but we also disseminate some of this information via memory sticks on the web, uh, things that can be uh, viewed at some other uh, later time. So we know that um, within our own organisations, conference papers, lectures, um, and so on, can be disseminated very quickly electronically. Um, then the question is, okay, we own a certain uh, sense, we own the information, but what about the bits and bytes? We don't actually own the bits and bytes in which that electronic media is presented. Okay, so this, this, the, the, there are those two questions of ownership and dissemination, who actually owns this uh, metadata is this material. The last question then is, well, is information actually knowledge? And that then raises the question of, of the nature of knowledge. What's this uh, related to? Well, there's the question of, of how, what, how we come to knowledge. The connection to, uh, knowledge, to education is through the famous uh, passage in Mino where, where Plato expresses the view that we come to know by, by, by remembering anamnesis idea, which suggests that there is, uh, our knowledge is somehow eternal and somewhere else. So there is a drawing out um, uh, of, of knowledge, educare. So that's somehow the, the knowledge we get is imprinted on our souls. The second thing that, uh, which, which Plato uh, talks about later, because he doesn't just stay with that idea, and that's in the Thetetus where he talks about what about perceptions, that source of knowledge. And we have the notion there, which he challenges, that man is the measure, which is from Protagoras. So things uh, that I feel uh, in myself, well, they must be uh, true in, in relation to me, but then what does that mean in relation to the nature of knowledge? In that, in that uh, particular dialogue, it comes to the view that knowledge is truly plus some kind of account. So, uh, the question here then comes back to the, the, the ownership and dissemination of knowledge and the ability to discriminate between true and false belief, between opinion and knowledge. This is crucial to us. Why? Well, we want to know whether global warming is real or not. Uh, this is not just a matter of opinion, not a matter of it's true for you and false for me. Uh, we want to know whether it's actually the case because governments make decisions on this basis. All right, so here I just want to set up that kind of notion of the importance of, uh, of, of what knowledge is. Now, when we come to formal education, we understand at least in one sense that education is about the transmission of knowledge. And transmission is transmission in a particular way. Okay, so... so the idea here is that we are actually, in one sense, engaged in this notion of transmission. In fact, one of the 
most important elements uh, in what modern education is doing. The second thing that we, we, we are forgetting in all of this, the drawing out is one thing. The second uh, understanding of education is in relation to the formation of character, educare. Okay, and this uh, it seems to be a little bit different to uh, the notion of the laws of physics and, and the law uh, and information like who won the last football. So, so when Leotard talks about knowledge, he tends to he's talking <coughs> about knowledge in that first transmission sense, the notion of knowledge uh, in, in the notion of information. And we know that it's being transformed through various technologies and what happens in the way in which we understand knowledge in the more modern kind of context is, is in the, the form of performativity. So basically we have the idea that instead of this educare part, we're concentrating more on the educare part, the drawing out kind of idea, uh, and the provision of professional and technical education is really what, uh, what our institutions are about, or about upskilling workers already uh, in the workforce, the notion of lifelong learning. So in other words, the functions of higher education no longer serve any kind of moral purpose inherent in the notion of education as the formation of uh, persons. So we have a flight from the idea of education as a deal. So in other words, we package knowledge according to this particular ways, uh, and so the packaging becomes very selective. There are only certain kinds of views and certain kinds of knowledge that, that, that are transmitted. And so we get a very particular kind of uh, understanding of the world. I won't go into too much detail about that, but what we see in all of this is a, is a, a shift to a much more behaviourist conception of education. So it, what we see then is the idea that students need to be able to demonstrate competence and relevant skills in whatever discipline it happens to be. So it's tailored in a certain kind of direction. Okay, so the, the problem there is that in moving to that kind of um, notion of education, we are somehow missing and, and avoiding the notion of educare, the formation of character, the imparting of virtue. Why? Well, it's very difficult to, to demonstrate that someone has achieve a kind of deep understanding of, of something and can see the connectedness. Uh, somebody this morning talked about the, the distinction between knowledge and wisdom. So the whole question of wisdom seems to disappear. We, we have then a very a behaviourist kind of um, way of understanding uh, education. Okay, the last little point I'll make in relation to this to set the picture I want is the, the generally uncritical acceptance of constructivism as uh, the, our understanding of, of uh, education and, and to educational theory, uh, particularly about teaching. The idea, of course, that somehow what's true for the student is true for the student, that knowledge is created and constructed by the student. Well, that becomes problematic, and this is why I mentioned the, the question of knowledge. What is knowledge? If it's, if it's just something I construct myself, we seem to sink into some sort of relativist model. Now, there is some truth in the constructivist point because Augustine himself argues that when somebody grasps something, they grasp it uniquely and they have to accommodate it into what they know. But knowledge itself is, is, is public, so there's the question of, the, of truth uh, that also needs to be considered. Now, a lot of big things to discuss here, and this is my, my central point. The problem, of course, is that none of this is discussed or thought about very much in educational circles. The discussion of the relative merits of different approaches to education and teaching and learning is generally missing in the academy. It might occur in conferences like this, but I'm sorry to say our, our, our colleagues in other places don't seem to be uh, too interested in this. And this brings me to the central point about uh, philosophy and uh, the, its importance in, in education. There's very little evidence these days of interest in uh, philosophy or philosophy of education within educational courses. And there are reasons for this. Uh, 
some of these is uh, due to governments cutting back on the time that students uh, uh, spend in their degree programs and of course there's always questions of pressures from outside such as accreditation requirements and that they need to learn how to do certain sorts of things. So it's a very pragmatic approach. Well, we don't have time for this philosophical reflection. It's all very good, but uh, look, we really have to teach them how to teach. Uh, we don't need them to think about what they're teaching or the theory of teaching or anything like that. So philosophy becomes a, an early casualty in this, in this process of uh, uh, stripping back educational courses and critical reflection and questioning uh, seems to disappear. So the, the place of philosophy in education becomes, becomes problematic. We also find it that disappearing, the philosophy of education, for example, uh, disappears entirely from philosophy, uh, faculties of education. Not completely because here and there there are individuals uh, who are hiding under some other a title as a, you know, a professor of education, a professor of curriculum, who actually is interested in philosophy and then perhaps is pushing this. But basically we can see that it, it, the philosophy has become somewhat marginalised. Now, uh, I think the, the, the difficulty uh, here, of course, is that although um, uh, we, we are concerned about philosophy of education, the other side of this is that it, no one's really sure what it is actually about. Uh, we know um, from the very brief and the overview that I gave here about the, the concept of knowledge itself and, and the need to consider some of these deeper questions about the nature of, 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 uh, of education itself, the nature of truth uh, and the nature of knowledge itself, of course. And there are lots of uh, ways in which we can think about any of these uh, problems. But the, 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 the reality is that these don't seem to be uh, any more of a focus. Uh, we know that, uh, for example, in the Anglo-Saxon world, there was this very big push in the 70s and 80s led by Peters and Hearst. There were broadly Marxist perspectives also around this period. And uh, continental philosophy too has, has been uh, important. Wittgenstein, Heidegger, Derrida to name a few, and of course a, a distinctly Catholic approach coming through Aquinas, uh, possibly Maritain, uh, McIntyre, Charles Taylor. Um, but the problem is that th this, though this is uh, in, in general within the philosophical world, it doesn't seem to actually address the, uh, or, or seem to have much influence or impact within educational faculties. Uh, now this could be that uh, philosophy of education itself is problematic because well, how do you distinguish it from educational theory? Well, um, it, it's certainly true that there may be um, no sharp boundaries and then Wittgenstein argued that boundaries can be vague. It doesn't mean that there are distinct uh, distinctions that can be drawn. Um, we know that, for example, there are problems in other disciplines about boundaries and I, I don't think this is a, uh, an issue we should terribly worried about. But nevertheless, this may be one of the reasons for this disappearance of it. Okay, so the, so the basic thing that I want to then conclude with is that uh, it seems to me we need to recapture the ground that was, that's lost. The philosophers themselves need to take a much deeper in, uh, in, interest in educational questions. Philosophical discussion is sorely needed. The original point that I began with, the, the kind of problematic, and I only chose the problematic with the notion of the, the nature of knowledge itself as an example, there's a plenty of other kinds of examples, but nevertheless, if we do to make sense of, uh, of what is required within the educational context, it seems to me we need to bring back uh, greater uh, involvement by philosophers and of course we need to perhaps stimulate more people to do philosophy of education. Thank you. Thank you very much.